Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as you ever can. A rule of life attributed to John Wesley and today is Aldersgate Sunday, the day on which we remember how John Wesley's heart was strangely warmed. Today is also the Sunday of Ascension Tide. So welcome to worship and uh, today our preacher will be uh, Tom Clayton, local preacher and member at Queen Street and the intercessions will be led by Colin Adamson, one of our circuit stewards and also a worship leader at Westborough.
Let us pray. A song of Christ's glory. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in our human likeness. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestay, bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall, shall be for ever. Amen. A prayer of confession. Whenever self obscures the needs of others, forgive us. Whenever we forget who our neighbour is, forgive us. Whenever we pass by on the other side, forgive us. For all those times we bring sorrow to your heart, draw us back into your forgiving arms and teach us once again your way. As we confess our need of your grace and mercy, may we hear your words of love and acceptance. Your sins are forgiven. You are set free. In Jesus' name. Amen. taken from the Acts of the Apostles. It's the first chapter. I read from verse 6 to verse 11. When the Apostles met together with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time give the kingdom back to Israel? Jesus said to them, The times and occasions are set by my Father's own authority, and it is not for you to know when they will be. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be filled with power and you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After saying this, he was taken up to heaven as they watched him and a cloud hid him from their sight. They still had their eyes fixed on the sky as he went away. When two men dressed in white suddenly stood beside them and said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus who was taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way 
that you saw him go to heaven. On the 24th of May, 1738, John Wesley experienced something that would change the direction of his life. In that now famous phrase, Wesley wrote in his journal that he found that his heart was strangely warmed as he came to trust completely in Christ and realised that through Christ he has been saved and set free from sin. This witness of the Spirit brought about a new understanding for him and this ultimately led to the founding of the Methodist movement that we think about on this Wesley Day. I want to suggest today that the same Spirit that so moved John Wesley is still at work in these times but that we also need to recognise and face up to the challenges that we currently encounter as well. My wife Angela is one of those people who loses things that aren't really lost. Where are my keys? I had my keys a minute ago. I must have them. Where are my keys? Thomas, where are my keys? I've left them at the shop. I've lost them. What am I getting over there? You might know somebody like that. Maybe you are somebody like that. In our reading from Acts, the disciples are once again faced with a very much more real loss of their own. Dazzling, confusing, overwhelming, incredible as the moment of ascension may have been. 
the disciples had to come to terms again with life without Jesus there beside them. Once again, they are caught unknowingly in the middle of two major events, semicolons to the exclamation marks of the resurrection and Pentecost. In these times of lockdown and shielding, of doing all we can to protect people from the virus, we too find ourselves in the middle of events, semicolons between lockdown and some normality resuming. We of course don't know the timings, when we might be able to be with family and friends again. Equally, the disciples had it made clear to them that the timings of the restoration of the kingdom to Israel was not for them to know. The timing was God's and God's alone. But Pentecost is coming. Jesus promises the disciples that the Holy Spirit is on its way in just a few days time. For the church today, there is a sense that things are moving. More people than ever are accessing worship online. One in four people in the UK have watched or listened to worship in the last few weeks. People have had time to think and consider spiritual matters more deeply. I really do believe that the church faces a watershed moment in its history, a revival on an unprecedented scale. The spirit that overshadowed Mary, that anointed Jesus and strangely warmed John Wesley's heart, is the same spirit at work in our world and in our church right now. The spirit is to us as Jesus was to his disciples. The disciples, understandably, kept looking to the sky. Two men dressed in white, possibly angels, though this isn't made explicitly clear, questioned them. Why do you stand here looking into the sky? We must not stare up at the sky as the disciples did, but look and move forward and heed Jesus' commission to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. But in so doing, we must acknowledge that as we bring good news to our communities, the communities are dealing with loss and with grief. The loss of loved ones is of course a challenge in any circumstances but it's even more acute right now. The church needs to be, and in many places is, at the forefront of helping people in this situation. But people are also coming to terms with loss in a different sense. The loss of jobs, of financial security, the loss of their churches, even the loss of the chance to celebrate big life occasions when they come about in these times. We hold in tension the loss and grief felt by many with the hope and the opportunity that the situation brings. Now this may feel like an almost impossible task but we have the Holy Spirit who strengthens us, guides us and infuses us with faith, hope and most crucially of all, love. Love is not and has never been in lockdown. They tried it once at a tomb in Jerusalem, but it didn't work. Jesus has ascended into heaven. And as we await Pentecost, may we prepare our hearts to be strangely warmed and transformed. May our churches be transformed into beacons of light that comfort the grieving, feed the hungry, give shelter to the homeless and stand out as witnesses for Jesus in Scarborough, in Filey and Whitby and to the ends of the earth. Amen.
Let us pray. Crucified, risen and ascended Lord, we come before you in prayer. We pray for the world, your world, full of creation and beauty, but yet torn apart by warfare and strife, by hunger and drought, by homelessness. And so we bring before you now all those who are in these situations at this time. May you bring peace and reconciliation, hope and provision. Above all, we pray for your world greatly affected by COVID-19. And so we pray for all those who have tested positive for the virus, asking for a speedy and full recovery where infection is still present. We give thanks for the lives of those who have sadly died and ask for your comfort and strength for the families and friends of all those bereaved. We pray for all doctors, nurses, care and social workers engaged on the front line, working in difficult and life-threatening situations. Give to them fortitude and endurance to run the race and to achieve the goal. We pray for our government, health and scientific experts as they lead and advise. We pray for the church, universal, nationally, connectionally and locally, gathering virtually or alone at home. May you be real and bring your touch of love and hope in these days as we yearn to join in worship and fellowship with one another face to face. We pray for those within our church families and known to us individually who need our prayers at this time. For those who are ill and suffering in any way, those who are missing their extended families. Give to them your healing, comfort, reassurance and love. On this day we give thanks for Susanna Wesley and amongst her many children, John and Charles, on this Aldersgate Sunday and Wesley Day. May our hearts as were theirs, be strangely warmed and set on fire with a zeal to serve you, particularly at this time and in the situations in which we find ourselves. Father God, as we bring to you our prayers, we remember that in this season your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, returned to the heavenly glory that you prepared for him in love and has he prayed that we his followers would one day join him in your presence to share in this glory and majesty ascending god for our needs and others we look to you for support comfort us in times of need reassure us in times of fear and in times of challenge, inspire us to look for you. Through Jesus Christ, our crucified, risen and ascended Lord. Amen.
Yeah. Mm-hmm.